you today? I hope you are good. I am good. Hey, do you remember what season we're in? That's right, we're in the season of Lent. Let's do a little review. We're in the season of Lent. How many days is Lent? 40, yeah, 40 days of Lent. And let's see, how long was Jesus in the desert or the wilderness? 40 days, you're right. Good work, and now let's see, do you remember the color that the church uses for Lent? Purple, do you like purple? I like purple. Now, what do we do in Lent? Why are we in Lent and what is the season for? Do you remember? Lent is a time that we need to take time out of our day, time out of our week, and try to get closer to God. It's a time that we make promises to God to try to put God first in our hearts. And this whole time while we're trying to put God first, that's preparing our hearts for Easter. Last week, we started saying a new prayer. Do you remember what that prayer is called? It's the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to say it every single Sunday in Lent. Are you ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Shh. Today's Bible story was a secret. Now, there is a man in our Bible story who snuck out in the middle of the night. He didn't want anybody to see him. Who do you think he went to go see? Jesus. That's right. Our Bible story comes from the the New Testament. Do you remember what those first four books of the Bible are called? Yeah, the Gospel. Shh. We got to do our quiet Bible story. Or maybe we don't have to be quiet at all because Jesus loves all of us. And we don't have to be afraid to love Jesus. Okay, our Bible story comes from the book of John. Let's read it. Nicodemus, John 3, 1 through 17. Tiptoe, tiptoe. Nicodemus, the Pharisee, crept out in the night to meet Jesus. Pharisees, such as Nicodemus, carefully studied God's law and tried to keep all the rules. Jesus frustrated with the Pharisees because he taught about God's love first, not God's laws. Nicodemus liked Jesus. Psst, Jesus, over here, Nicodemus called. Nicodemus called Jesus over into the shadows. I know you're from God and you teach and heal people. Yes, Jesus replied. But to really know God, you have to be born again from above. What? Nicodemus whispered. You can only be born once. You can't have two birthdays. Jesus answered firmly. You're born once as a baby, but you can be born again as a child of God. And our world friend adds, A Pharisee who is nice to Jesus? You don't see many of those in these stories. Shh, Nicodemus urged. He didn't want the other Pharisees to know that he was talking to Jesus. Where do you go to be alone with Jesus? Nicodemus said, You teach about God. You should understand, Jesus went on. Anyone who believes in me will be born again and will have new life. Nicodemus thought hard, stroking his beard. Born again, new life. I don't understand. I'll say it clearly, Jesus said. God loves the world. So God sent his son. Whoever believes the son will not die, 
but will have eternal life with God. I'm not here to punish the world. I'm here to save it. Now our world friends have some questions. Why can't Nicodemus understand what Jesus is talking about? This is a lot of new information for Nicodemus. No one had ever talked about these things before. So my friends, if Jesus were here on earth and you got to go find a special time to be with Jesus, what would you ask Jesus? There's so many places and things to think about what you would ask Jesus, but you know what? You can ask Jesus, you can pray. In our Bible story, there is a part that said, where do you go to be alone with God? Do you have a place? Do you have a place to go to be alone with God? Sometimes I go for walks and that's when I can talk with God. And sometimes while I'm sitting in bed before I fall asleep, I talk to God about my day and the good parts and the bad parts. I try to bring God close to me often. Our world kids are learning all about Nicodemus too. Let's see what they learn. one night. And when he spoke to Jesus, Nicodemus had many questions about the kingdom of God. Can you imagine going to see Jesus one-on-one -on -one and getting to ask him questions? Oh, I don't think I could. I'd be too shy to ask anything. You totally could, Clara. He's a people person. Very approachable. Well, I would like to ask him what it was like to preach in front of so many people. I'd want to know what his favorite miracle was. I bet it was walking on water. I've actually got a detailed 15-part question I want to ask him. The first part is about... I'd ask Jesus what eternity is like. Um, why would you ask that? Oh, because during worship, Pastor Donna said that we'd live in the kingdom of God for eternity. And I asked myself, Monty, what's eternity like? And I said, well, Monty, eternity is like forever. And then I asked, well, what's forever like? And then I said, well, forever is like eternity. And then I said... Monty, we get it. So that's what I'd ask Jesus. That's an easy one, Monty. <laughs> eternity is a really long time. Like a million years. But longer. Like a hundred million years. No, a billion years. No, a million billion years. No! I don't know if that helps, Otto, since you can always keep adding to a number. You make a good point, Clara. What do you think it's like? Well, I think eternity is like a river. It's always happening, and it keeps going and going. So, us living with Jesus for eternity is, is like we're on a wonderful river with no end. Yeah, but rivers do end. <laughs> I can't picture eternity like a river because I'd wonder when it ends and where it started, too. Well, how do you see it, Ada? Well, I think it would be like a feeling. Like a warm, happy, loving feeling. And the feeling is around you and in your heart and everywhere. And it keeps on feeling like that. Does anyone have some crayons or something? I still don't think that really describes eternity. I know. It's hard to imagine. Maybe eternity with God is too big for us to imagine. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh. Or I'd ask Jesus if birds can swim. Some birds can swim, Monty. Like penguins. Great. Cross that one off the list. <laughs> Have you ever acted like a ninja? Well, remember Nicodemus and he snuck out in the middle of the night? He 
kind of reminds me of a ninja. He snuck around so no one would see because he had questions about God. He wanted to learn more. So maybe you can act like a ninja today. Go sneak around and if somebody catches you, you can tell them all about God's great big love and how Jesus told us that we need to think about God's love before all of the other things. Would you like to make something with me? I have some ideas. So what I was thinking about from this story is love. Jesus told Nicodemus, and he tells us to put love first, that God loves us so much. God put Jesus here to help us, not to tell us that we're doing it wrong, not to be mad at us, but to love us and teach us how to love that way. So what reminds me of love more than anything? A heart. So I made this fun heart, just coloring it and thinking about different ways that I can show love to others. Do you know how to make a heart? I bet you do, but if you don't, it's really easy. I just take a piece of paper and I fold it in half. It doesn't even have to be perfect. And then I make the heart shape, just the half like that. I'll show you. That's all. Just a half a heart. And you cut it out. And you have a heart to decorate. And you can think about all the different ways you can love others. I have another one too. If you don't want to do that, I made a whole bunch of little purple hearts. Why did I use purple? Right, because purple is the color of Lent. And I cut out different hearts to think about different people that I know. And I wrote on them. This one says, I love you because you are so loving. So I can give that to one of my friends or families. I love you because you always help others. This one says, I love you because you care about other people. Here's my biggest one. I love you because you help others learn and you know how to make people feel good. So I can go tape this onto the doors of my family or I can put them on my friend's desks at school or at work. I can go slip them under the door. I can put them in backpacks or cubbies. How can you give somebody a heart and tell them how much you love them and why they are special to you and special to God? Well, friends, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.